Welcome everyone to today's quick live stream. Just on another website I saw this new Chewy or so mini book scrolling by and I wanted to give some quick notes to this because this video of my Sony Vario P is actually quite well received. Well kind of sort of surprisingly. Of course I knew the Sony Vario P is nice. Just said the video is a leather official Japan edition leather wrap case here that eventually I would maybe theoretically use as a portable road warrior kind of thing just by the way I have the battery out because somehow when the battery is in then it usually discharges within a week or some nonsense and uh, yeah of course super pretty nice machine I made a introduction video of this and because this video is so well running I thought I give a quick few notes here about this Chewy mini book thing and welcome in the audience by the way Tuxutku and friends and uh, zero frames so why is this noteworthy of course there also previously was this GPD pocket 2 or something or pocket 1 and uh, of course this is now the latest silicon how trustworthy these companies are I don't know I, it's the first time you guess is as good as mine and I'm not saying that you should use this 25% early bird discount thing, but just going over this uh, Intel Core M3 8100Y processor, 8 gigs of memory. So this also the things if you are interested in this kind of mini machines, um, of course I would recommend rather buy here something new, something like the GPD Pocket 2 or something because why? So first of all those Sony Vario P also go for quite a lot of money. I was super lucky, I monitored this a year or something and I got this for 200 euro where I was completely super lucky. Also the regular ones only have 1.3 gigahertz Atom performance, a first gen Atom, of course not very fast. And um, yeah, so the regular ones have 1.3 gigahertz and only this luxury editions you sometimes very rarely find with 1.8 or even 2 gigahertz, but again, old, a decade ago Atom performance not the most amazing. Um, this is why I wanted to give this quick shout out because the Sony Vario P video running totally surprisingly amazing Google algorithm wise or whatsoever. So no idea if they will deliver but this GPD Pocket 2 at least delivered so you probably better off spending your hard earned bucks here for that. And one note is this looks this keyboard looks a little bit cramped so also by the way why do I not yet use this? Totally amazing because uh, power VR graphics I still didn't find enough time. I only installed some T2 test stuff and such and will probably continue to uh, do the power VR stuff just for the fun of it. I, you, you know, just had this here part for the collection of outstanding stuff. And uh, otherwise I would probably not have purchased this to be honest. And um, another thing is of course, so this keyboard is relatively okayish except a little bit shift arrow situation here uh, aside the Japanese glyph there but this is mostly US-ish, not completely here but mostly. And um, typing on this, so I think typing on this is relatively okayish, I mean of, of course it's like 90% or something and chiclet and so on but it's somewhat manageable the, the small display is more of a limiting factor here I think but this is also my concern here with the GPD Pocket 2 the keyboard looks a little bit yeah chicletish a little bit spacebar and arrow key you name it yeah and this is why I started this live stream because I wanted to say so this looks at least well this is of course uh, 10 keyless 60% uh, ish something but at least it looks somewhat like it could maybe, oh by the way did I somehow not switch back, this looks like it could maybe somehow um, at least typeable to, to some degree but again you wouldn't need to test this and um, of course here it's, it's, uh, it's, I only see the website as new as you so your guess is as good as mine but certainly not amazing so even if it looks like it could maybe usable I have the feeling maybe uh, only a millimeter or less uh, key press uh, distance there and such and uh, yeah so anyway um, also why this is um, so I don't 
no, this GPD stuff here, I only touched it once somewhere, so, but I think you can't um, turn the display over, so on this one you can uh, completely 180 degree, 180, 360, 360 degree, uh, folds this display over, which is actually not too bad of a thing, not that I would use it so often, but at least it's a nice added bonus. Also the problem here of this, of course, is that it does have a very small display, although it is super high resolution, one, uh, 1600 by whatever it was, 600 or something, but of course this here has a much nicer display, full HD with, uh, of course, much smaller bezels and yeah no idea if they will really bring it to market you can never be sure with this web rendering here also it looks well at least the rendering looks a little bit nicer than this gpd thing pocket thing there because uh, of this touch uh, area there so this of course is only is the only one of the better things here is this uh, track point ibm style thing which is quite nice and on the GPD pocket, it looks a little bit. Uh, also, really need some scene buttons here sometime soon. Um, this here looks a little bit less nicely usable on terms of mouse or track points. They have here some small area. Here is it even uh, should be there on the screen. And um, my concern would be that this might not be the most amazing to use. But this also boils down the thing of this ultra mobile compact category stuff that in general, if you are a heavy, so, so, but not, so if you are a heavy typer, this keyboard, especially this new chicken keyboard stuff may be very unpleasant to type on and be productive on. And the display is super small. So usually you find yourself sitting here very there. <coughs> Sorry, and at least here on this one, this at least here on the first impression looks a little bit more usable with this sensor navigation error, uh, area here. And keyboard, yeah, time will show a little, yeah, so it might be annoying for heavy computer science typers, but. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, I found this interesting to share here. I hope you appreciate it. Also, of course, memory this only has, um, was it one or two gigs of, maybe it has two gigs of memory um, or one. Anyway, of course, these new machines have way more memory and uh, a much better processor. So also, and also uh, this would of course be amazing if it would have uh, the old Sony VIP, if it would have had USB-C power delivery, but of course it's a decade old. So everything on those advertised render images here is of course more amazing uh, here also with USB-C and power delivery and also one of the more annoying things no digital output so no HDMI so everything basically more or less better on this new model so don't be set if you rarely find them on eBay just get probably a newer thing I just would maybe not risk this 25% early bird something discount in case they want cash up front and never deliver and then one thing, one little shout out here to Intel. I really hate their model numbering because first I thought here Core M3 Why is this some atom? Because this is what I really hate at, at, at Intel that you never know exactly from the model number what exactly this is. Then you go to the Intel Arc listing here and 8th gen Intel Core M processor where I wonder was, are there some Core Ms which are atom? Or not, or maybe, and then this is also a code name products formerly known, no, formerly known as Ember, like why, like artist formerly known as Prince or something. I find this quite hilarious. I really wish they would have had more reasonable architecture instructions and architecture references here, because with this listing, I still wouldn't know. By the way, the two hundred eighty-one dollar just for the CPU, in case you wondered, and. Um, yeah, from this listing alone, by the way, so 8 watts down configure, so 5 watt TDP and up to 8 and down to 4.5 configurable thermal design power. But again, I really don't like the Intel for this kind of listing because then I Google around on uh, Wikipedia and such just to find out is this an atom or not. So Ember like Y and then uh, you see with all the lake stuff here, coffee lake and all the other lakes and, and coffee whatsoever. Um, 
that you even uh, don't find it here, right? Um, this was, I think, Ember. And uh, yeah, Ember is not Ember Lake. So yeah, so many confusing listings with only not even a full talk improvement, only a half talk something uh, marketing reissue. And then you even need to Google further here just to find um, what Ember Lake exactly is. Ember Lake, I really wish they would have like in good old Pentium days and whatnot and uh, so on that you at least find, know from the model number precisely what this is. So Wishki Lake, uh, where is Ember Lake here? Um, yeah, even in this, so yeah, then it goes on, whatever, and so on. I think, actually, I pre-googled this, it was somewhere there, KB Lake, Ember Lake, um, uh, whatever. So actually, it is not an atom. I found this already some minutes ago, but now I don't have it open. But yeah, leave me in the comments below if you find this amazing. Maybe also we need to use another search engine to actually find something. Just a quick overview here. I hope you enjoy this quicker. Here's Ember Lake, whatever. Uh, oh, this is not the right Ember Lake. Is here also Intel or not? Yeah, here's uh, finally so much to internet search in this day and age. Um, so 8th gen Ember Lake, why? And yeah, it's a little bit hard. To, so this is, but here's 8th gen KB Lake, and then it's also 8th gen Ember Lake. Like, seriously, I in the meantime start to really lose overview which of the silicon, uh, which ISER and silicon process node belongs here to which. Probably need to hang here a huge diagram on the wall or something to even have an understanding. So yeah, it's uh, probably not uh, Intel, uh, probably not Atom. I would guess otherwise it wouldn't here uh, be an 8th gen Ember Lake, I would hope at least. But there you see uh, Intel in 2019, you're not even 100% percent sure what you're getting. And um, yeah, I hope you um, enjoyed this quick overview. Of course, we don't, have, don't yet have 1 million subscribers to get here samples of all of those pieces. Not sure if I would by it myself, but certainly from the specification, uh, also faster SSD, of course, M.2 M and H8, 8 inch full HD screen IPS. This, oh, by the way, this is not only, it is high resolution in the Sony Vario P, but it is not, um, it's not very high quality, so it, it looks a little bit TN ish and um, whatever. And this might have, the Sony Vario P actually from a decade ago might have quite some backlit pulled with modulation that even usually I'm not the most sensitive to this but if I dim this a little bit even I think my eyes don't like this pulled with mod modulation the most. Let's see we have comments in the <coughs> sorry comments in the audience and then this quick shout out here will be over. Um, he's, uh, Neon writes he has this Chewy Hi8 Tablet pretty decent quality. How much money are those? So I think they were like 800 something. Although the comments was already some minute ago. So right now, you are the next. Uh, here was a counter somewhere. Um, the next uh, I don't know 20 days or something. They offer 25% off kind of uh, crowdfunding. Yeah, here 25 early bird for get first uh, first access. And I think I saw somewhere 800 something. I'm not really sure if this. Anyway, more comments. Um, not for sale yet. So it's it's set. I saw on some other news site some. I think I remember some 800 something. Let's see. Do we find this uh, price? And again, you should probably really think in the reason you see for even. Oh, it's so dark. No. Um, even for myself, this is relatively cramped form factor, so you probably really should think if you can get work done on this kind of machines with this small of a keyboard and display. So don't waste your money, maybe one good machine is better than a desktop and this small thing that you can't use for much on the go or something. And uh, let's see more. Uh, by the way, I want to check price. Uh, do they have you already? 
something I think I saw it also on some German website book uh, so here they write $600 which is slightly less than I remembered but don't quote me on this not sure if this new site is secured for 600 it's and by, by the way you on some crazy eBay auctions you find the Sony Vario P for 600 so if they really deliver it I would probably recommend going with this new refresh here of uh, this companies because of all the compromises of course decade old Atom uh, old not even USB 3, um, old fashioned charging stuff and, and so on and so on, old battery and old and expensive to purchase replacements for if you ever find a battery and so on and so on. So just mostly, I mostly made this video because the other video of the Sony VoIP is watched so often so I wanted to have this shout out. And um, yeah, did they not have a counter there? I thought I saw a counter there, uh, was it 25 days or something? Why do I even Google design of mini book? Um, was it, why do I even Google yoga? What the heck? Anyway, uh, however that was created. Yeah, the specs looks quite nice. Uh, $600 is even slightly less. For $600 it's probably even, in my opinion, quite reasonable. And if they really deliver this, uh, again, be warned that not all of these companies always deliver the product. So sometimes it's just some Kickstarter like crowdfunding stuff and they never deliver. Um, but as Neon says in the audience, he has a Chewy Hi8 tablet that he, uh, in his opinion, is pretty decent quality. So maybe they really deliver it. And um, even if the Pentium uses Gemini, uh, so the spec looks nice. But Concerned about the multi-threading performance with the M3 processor compared to 4-core Pentium Silver, also the Pentium. Yeah, this is of course a compromise, always not only back in the day with this, but also the new ones, this ultra low voltage and also form factor, right? But even here you see you're better off with this new stuff because here the battery officially probably lasted two hours. There is a bigger battery that is probably has a battery bump like this, I guess, uh, that is annoying and maybe the bigger battery lasted four hours, a smaller battery probably lasted two hours, but now of course it's old and a decade old, so now it maybe lasts one, and a, one hour if I'm lucky or something. So yeah, all the many reasons why you probably want to go with uh, such kind of new uh, additions here. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview and learned something and don't forget to share, like and subscribe for all the next reviews, shoutouts, tinkering, coding and such to come.